Hello, everyone. Dave Keller with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for coming back uh, on the final bar. Good to have you with us. Um, also joining us today for the first time, Mark Newton from Newton Advisors. Mark, I've uh, known you for a number of years, and it's such a pleasure to have you on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dave. It's great to, uh, it's great to be here. Thanks for the invite. Of course. So you sent a couple charts, and I'd love for you to just talk talk through them and 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 talk about what you're seeing. The first one was actually really interesting because it's a really long term chart, a long term monthly chart of the S and P. What does this uh, What does this tell you? Yeah, I thought I would I'd sort of bring a longer term perspective uh, to your show and and really take a look at how the S and P looks. So, you know, a lot of people look at things on a very short term basis, and oftentimes it's nice to just have a longer term view. And, and, you know, you see the S&P on a monthly chart, you see the 10-month moving average. A couple of things stand out. One is that, as you noted earlier in, in your bit, uh, you know, momentum has really started to tail off pretty dramatically. We're seeing a lot of negative momentum divergence uh, just on the right-hand side of the chart. I think that's interesting. Uh, we really hit the highest overbought levels we've seen in, in over almost 20 years back in January of 2018. And on subsequent higher highs, momentum has actually nosedived. And even recently, it's really started to tail off badly. So that is a little bit of a, a warning sign. But I think, you know, as you know, it's, it's proper to uh, wait for, for evidence of deterioration. Uh, when you look at those prior peaks, you see back in 2007 and in 2000, we also saw evidence of uh, momentum uh, deterioration and really waning uh, in divergence. But it's really important for the average to cross the 10 month moving average and for the, the average itself to turn down. Now, when that happened back in 2000, as well as in 2007 and got under that 10 month, uh, really it stayed under there almost for the entire bear market. So for those that are looking for really a longer term, you know, if there's one indicator, one thing you use to say, all right, am I in stocks? Am I out of stocks? You know, if you wait for this 10 month to really roll over and when the S and P makes a monthly close under that, and really just say, okay, if it's under it on a close and I'm out, if it's above it, then I'm back in. Uh, it really can help in terms of risk management to keep people out of the market when, when we started to turn down. That's fantastic. And it's such a great reminder to keep a long-term perspective. I think we get so caught up in the short-term volatility, especially now in a, in a choppy week, right? The, the second chart you sent was, was growth versus value. Can you talk us through this? Yeah, so this is a ratio chart of the iShares S&P growth ETF, uh, the IBW over the uh, an iShares S&P value ETF. So the growth over value uh, plotted out in ratio terms. And you can see that largely it had been rather sideways for uh, almost seven, eight years until right after the election. And then it really started to turn higher dramatically. Uh, we have been in a very rapid growth phase over the last few years up until you know, the last month, and we really saw sort of a shot across the bow with momentum turning down very sharply, and that coincided with this ratio actually breaking the trend line from 2016. So I view this as, as definitely something that would indicate that uh, value is, is, you know, should look a little bit more attractive in, in the years to come. Uh, we're seeing definitely some, some evidence of growth uh, waning. Uh, the bottom part, you see just a 14-period RSI relative strength index, and we actually saw some, some negative momentum divergence on that recent peak into this year. So we did have a little bit of advance warning that potentially it could happen, but as always, it's proper to wait for the actual break, and I think we've seen that in the last month. So for me, that, that's definitely a warning that you know growth could be uh, you know starting to falter, and one might want to you know favor more value versus growth in the, uh, the months to come. We well, talk about a different environment than what most investors have been dealing with, right? For for years now, if that if that follows through, I think it would catch a lot of people potentially on on the wrong side of things. F finally, you sent us yeah, a that's one, one one yeah one one final point to make on that is even if it were to move back to new highs into year end or into early next spring, the momentum has rolled over so dramatically that it's going to be difficult to really regain those former peaks, and so. You know, it is sort of a warning when momentum really starts to dive like that. You know, and so that's proper to put into perspective. Perfect. And then finally, you sent us a chart of, uh, of mid caps relative to the S and P. Yeah, this is the S and P mid cap 400 index over the S and P, and a lot of people put their focus on small caps and have noted that small caps have been going down for for years, and, and that's true. They really peaked out in 2014. But it really is the, the fact that mid caps have also started to really deteriorate of late. And I think that is potentially a bigger concern on an intermediate term basis. Uh, oftentimes, when you look back over the last hundred years, you know, bear markets start 
initially with small cap deterioration and then mid cap and then finally large cap. And we've seen that small cap, but really recently the mid cap has joined. And now we see a break of this consolidation that's really been ongoing since uh, 2010. So for me, that's definitely a concern that, that mid cap is starting to wane. And as we all know, you know, in the last 12 months, it's really been proper just to be in large cap growth. And now growth is starting to falter a little bit. And so it's really interesting that a lot of the style shifts that we've been seeing of late. These are three fantastic charts, Mark. We're, we're out of time, but I'd just love to ask one quick question of you. You know, so it, it's definitely painting a more cautious picture, it seems like, you know, from these long-term charts. What would you need to see very quickly to, to maybe suggest that this is incorrect, that maybe we're going to see further upside? Is there a particular tell or signal that you'd be looking for? Well, I think the longer-term charts certainly are, are still in a good shape price-wise. And so, you know, the intermediate-term trend for me is really going to be bullish unless we take out August lows. And so for me, that's really the the, the key that we're really going to start to accelerate lower. Um, you know, until that happens, I, I, I don't rule out the fact that we can we can rally out of this. October, obviously, is still a very volatile month notoriously and we've seen a little bit of volatility of late and so uh you know it might be interesting over the next four to six weeks however you know my thinking is uh you know we, we're heading into a seasonally bullish time and uh, you know pre-election years obviously uh, between now and year end in the next spring we could potentially rally out of this it's more when price starts to confirm what a lot of these other warning signs are showing us and i think that's really uh, what investors need to pay attention to Mark, thanks so much for coming on the show. That was fantastic. What a great take on, on the big picture. And, and thanks for going through the long-term uh, tells with us. Really, really helpful. Thanks, Dave. Great joining you. Look forward to doing so again soon. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Mark Newton of Newton Advisors. And I hope you appreciate the, some of the guests we have coming on. These are the people that the pros listen to. So I hope you've gained a little from hearing their take on the world.